I stayed in Atlanta 15 years. Okay. I'm, I'm back on the West now. Okay, you, I'm, I came but you back. Did, so you in, in the 90s, mid-90s? I'm from 93 to 2008. Okay. A so, ATL. You know, your boy was there. That's, your boy was there. I'm telling so you. So you know all about 112. Come you on, know man. about Diamonds and Pearls. I know. You know about the Gold Club. I know everything. Okay. okay. I know it was Diamonds and Pearls, and 112 was at the other location. Yeah. Oh, and then one Next to the Kroger. In, one, yeah. Disco Kroger. Yeah, that's what, I'm, what David Justice and, not David Justice, but uh, uh, Andre Rising and the Left Eye was in there wilding out in, yeah. in the grocery store. Uh-huh. Atlanta Live. Yeah. Go down the stairs. Yeah. Uh, and then 112 moved to the old Diamonds of Pearl location. Chester Bridge. Yeah, thank you. So I, I know all that, man. <laughs> I, know, I know a lot. I know the, you know, the original Magic City. I, original Bell Four. I'm the guy. And Blue Flame. It's Stroker. So you name all them spots. <laughs> I'm the guy, when the club closed, I'm in there hanging out. I'm gonna put the tables, the chairs on the table. Right. I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, I'm down there with the house mom. Right. While all the girls is changing in their yeah. regular clothes. They don't let nobody down there. I'm right. down there kicking in. I got some wings. You been to the Claremont too, haven't you? Everywhere, eat breakfast. <laughs> See, people don't know about <laughs> I'm laughing, you laughing, because you know what goes on in the Claremont. Come on, I, I know everything, but um, yeah, I can tell you a lot about that, that ATL. When I got to ATL, it was 93. Mm-hmm. I went to the uh, Freak Nick. April, ah. 90, April 93. I heard about the Freak Nick. That Freak Nick happened in 91. It was a picnic. It happened in 92. Piedmont Park sold the whole park out. And they was like, man, this freak nigga, I heard about it. Mm-hmm. So me and a whole bunch of people heard about it. Mm-hmm. And we, freak nigga probably went from 20,000 people to 400,000 in a year. Uh, yeah, I was there. I, I moved to Atlanta because of freak nigga. That's, my, the, that's the, my story. <laughs> at the time, I was living in Savannah. I had went back, to, so I had went back, finished up my, my schooling, but I was living in Savannah in the off season. And I called my brother and I kept hearing people talk about it. I said, well, I'm going to go to the Freak I'm going to go to Freak Nick. <laughs> I called my brother, hey, bro, they got this thing called Freak Nick going off in Atlanta. He like, went in it. I said, such and such. He's like, okay, I'll meet you there. Freak Nick 93 was life-changing. It was, it was a monster. It was life-changing. We, um, we got wind of it, right? We took about probably like 15 dudes from Oakland, like some baller, little baller crew. Yeah. We went out there. We, we, we checked into a little hotel. It was like a bunch of Detroit dudes, Miami, mm-hmm. some, some, uh, some Cleveland dudes. And we kind of all clicked up, and our hotel was like a like a crew. And um, Freak Nick '93, I went for the weekend. Now, mind you, I'm, I'm born April 28th. Freak right. Nick is my birthday. That's, oh, that's the weekend. So, <laughs> so my birthday is is Freak Nick. I check in the hotel three nights. I check out probably like three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my homies from Oakland had moved to Atlanta. And he was like, man, what you, what you gonna do? What you, like, what you doing in life? I'm like, man, I'm about to get me a little crib in the town. Probably, probably spend about a half mil up on the hill, a little on them little private roads or something. He was like, you gonna spend 500,000 in Oakland? He was like, let me show you what you get in Atlanta for 500. We rode around looking at houses. He showed me these big old houses for like 350. I'm like, what? So it was, it was planted. Yes. I, I went home, I get home, ain't nothing but drive-bys and shootings and violence and I mean seriously man at the time friends of mine had split up into a street war. Right. So friends, we in a small town, Oakland is four hundred thousand population. Right. We got a small crew of homies that are now enemies. Right. And it's really hard in that situation to determine what's coming your way. Right. Cause who's who's who picked what side? I don't know. Who's who's friends, who's mad at me because I hang out with them. Right. Like it, it was really weird. And I'm going to Atlanta, taking little trips. And I just was like, man, I'm about to buy me a house out here. I went to the Jack the Rapper, which is in August, Mm -hmm. four or five months after Freak Nick. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell nobody nothing. We had Jack the Rapper, it's Tupac, it's Snoop Dogg, it's people everywhere. It's it's, it's not Freak Nick, but it's still still an ATL vibe. Yeah, yeah. oh, absolutely. I just got, I had a little rental car. I just drove over to Southwest Atlanta by myself and bought a house and then went back to the convention like I didn't even do it. And by the end of the year, the house was ready. I moved out and the rest is history, you know? That's how it happened. Atlanta was a hick town too. It wasn't, it, it was nothing like it was because I got there, I went to Freak Nick like you. I went to Freak Nick the first time in 92, went back in 93. I called my agent 
That was uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Start breaking down, waning down Sunday. I called my agent uh, uh, Monday. I'm moving to Atlanta. Send the guy <laughs> up here. He's like, okay, we got this kind of, you got this this much money to get a house. I said, I don't care what. Wasn't nobody say. in Atlanta at that time. It was Bobby Brown. <laughs> it was. Um, I'm trying to think who was there that was, that was like really like kicking up some dust. I remember uh, my boy Eric Sermon got there kind of early. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, you had like. I think LA, I think Babyface. I'm saying the face was, yeah, that, that was the game. Yeah. But but no, but like you said, Bobby Brown was really the only like celebrity celeb that was I, there. Cause I, I got there and I watched a little bit and I seen Bobby Brown having so much fun. I was like, I'm about to do what he's doing, because he's having too much fun. And that's when the club stayed open all night. I probably, the club stayed open till seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I've pro I probably <laughs> I got there at the end of 93. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I had a platinum album in 89, 90, 90, 92, 93. I had four platinum albums when right. I got there. Right. I show up, I got my little car, I got like 20 inch rims. They're like, what are those uh, flying saucers? What is, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know, I was like Michael Jackson. I was, <laughs> that's when you, uh, when you, you, somebody go, man, you from California. You know Michael Jackson? <laughs> of course I know Mike. What are you talking about? Right. Like, <laughs> man, I used to be at Magic City. I, I I never really tell this story. I used to be at Magic City and I had um I had a, a endless supply of the really good California weed. And literally, people like you you wanna tell some chick, uh, man, girl, I'm trying to kick with you, what I gotta do? I was open that bag. <laughs> 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 They're like, what is that? I'm like that's bad, but Cali, baby, like I, I, I was having so much fun in '93. But Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta that we know now, I was, I'm proud that I was there to see it born. Young Dallas Austin, Young Jermaine Dupri, mm -hmm. Young LaFace Records, uh, Outkast came out of all that. Yeah, um, you got Luda, you got the Ti's now, you got the Olympics came. Yeah, '96, and then they started building up Atlanta with the Olympic money. Yeah, and when the Olympics left, Atlanta was a nice city. Yes, it was nice, and yes. from that point on, the music industry was establishing itself, mm -hmm. and it turned into a whole new Atlanta. The Atlanta it is now. I'm, I just it just make you proud when you go out there and you see the entrepreneurs and you see the dream. You see the fire in people trying right. to make it. Yes. Trying to make it. Like, yes. everybody ain't making it, but they be trying to make it. Right. And that's like, that to me is so important that you try because people have dreams and they sit around and they think of stuff, but they don't try it. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.